Hello and welcome to a tutorial on adding and styling a JetForm Builder form in the Bricks Editor. My name is Andrew and I would like to remind you to like this video if you find it helpful, post your questions and reactions underneath and subscribe to the Crocoblock YouTube channel. As you can see in my dashboard, I have already installed and activated both the Bricks theme and the JetForm Builder plugin and in the Bricks settings I have turned on the form toggle to enable modification of the forms with Bricks. Additionally, I've created the form for booking travel tours. The form includes input fields for selecting a specific tour, choosing the departure day and tour lengths, inputting the number of participants, a repeater field section that includes text fields for participants' details and is added as many times as the value the user inputs in the previous field, an email address, a phone number and a checkbox to require a car rental which triggers the appearance of a conditional block with a car brand and a car class select fields. Then we have fields for filling in the payment information such as the card number, expiry date, CVC number, terms and conditions checkbox and a submit button. I've also added a calculated field to show the user who is booking a tour the total price, which depends on a number of factors such as which tour is chosen, for how many days, the number of participants and if renting a car is required, which car class is chosen. I could go even more advanced and add flexible pricing rates with the help of the Jet Booking plugin, for example to account for weekend and seasonal pricing and various discounts. So basically this form will enable tour booking and also serve as a simple calculator for site visitors to estimate their travel expenses. As you know, Crocoblock's Jet Style Manager plugin provides a number of styling options that can be implemented right here in the form editor to modify each individual form field, such as changing typography and layout. However, for the sake of this Bricks Editor demonstration, I have not styled the form here, except I only divided the fields into two columns to make the form fit into one screen for a better user experience. Let's now see how we can make the form prettier with the Bricks editor and attach it to the website front end. One of the popular ways to display forms, including booking forms, is through pop-ups. And that's exactly how I want my form to appear on the page. Bricks has built-in pop-up builder functionality, which can be accessed in two ways. By navigating to Bricks templates, hitting the add new button and then choosing the pop-up template type or if you're already in the Bricks editor, hitting the templates button at the top left corner and then the plus button on the right. I'm going to choose a name for the template, choose the pop-up template type, click create template and click to edit the newly created pop-up. In the editor window, I'll start by clicking the plus button in the middle of the work screen to add a section which is the fundamental structural element in Bricks that already contains a container element inside. First, I'm going to insert a form into this pop-up to get the general idea of how our design looks and then proceed to initial pop-up styling, dealing with its width, background, border and header. To integrate the form, hit the plus button in the top left corner and access the available Bricks elements. Find the jet form element and drag it onto the section underneath the container element. Now click the bluish form icon to access the form settings block in the left dashboard. Here we can choose the form we previously prepared and modify some default form settings, such as horizontal or vertical field layout, change the required sign, field label HTML tag, Ajax or page reload submit type and enable form progress for a multi-step form. These are all content form settings that we are going to leave as default. From here we can also access the form style settings, which we'll look into after we adjust the settings for the whole pop-up. Next I want to add a heading and insert it into the container element above the form. After I get it in place and type the needed content, I proceed to the element style settings. I want the heading to stand out from the rest of the form, so I change its background color, position it vertically centered and make its top corners rounded.
Now let's click the gear icon located in the top toolbar to access our template pop-up settings. I want to make sure that the backdrop functionality is on and the background layer that dims the page behind the pop-up is partially transparent. As for the template's background, I want it to be 100% transparent and instead I will use the section and form settings later to have better control over the pop-up's background. While we are here, let's modify the interactions and condition settings. Interactions allow us to choose which user or browser events trigger the appearance of the pop-up with the form. I want the pop-up to appear after a user spends some time on the page, so I choose Content Loaded as the trigger option, set a 2 second delay and show element as the action. For the target, it's ok to leave it as self or specify the name of the pop-up we're working on. The condition settings allow us to set where on the site the pop-up may appear, for example on the entire site or on specific page. Let's go to the section style settings now and change a few things, namely set the template's width, add a dark background and ensure the pop-up's corners are rounded. After clicking the jet form elements, we can proceed to the form styling settings. Several things need to be changed here regarding the form content layout and design. First, I want to ensure the form width aligns with the section width, so I set its value to 100% and add space around the form content by adding padding in the layout section. Now let's proceed to typography and make the words more pronounced against the dark background. In this case, I want to make all text the same color and I will also make all field types the same color later whether they are text or select fields. By default, changing the color settings in the typography section impacts text inside the fields and labels. However, below there is a separate label section and if it's activated, its settings overwrite the more general typography rules. The same goes for the font size. We are not going to check all of the following setting options as some of them are not relevant for the form we have while others look fine by default. For example, the background, border and gradient overlay settings provide the same effect as the same settings we've already modified previously for the container. The following transform and CSS settings are used for adding animation to various bricks elements and we don't have a suitable material for these settings here. The form row settings allow customization of the row's density in the form. However, the spacing between rows look fine to me as it is, and we can additionally check the design by quickly switching to preview mode and back. The label settings include the typography, color and layout settings for labels, as well as for the borders and required marks. For this form, I will not add borders or modify the general form typography settings that are active now. The description settings would normally modify the text we use for additional information for user but there are no field descriptions in our form. The next set of settings under the input field label can significantly impact how the form looks. Here we can make changes specifically to the placeholder text or any text that the users type in the fields, change the field's color and border style, add padding, which will change the distance from the field content to its border, and margin, which will change the distance from the field to any neighboring element, including the label as opposed to settings that control the whole form row. For this form, I am satisfied with the general typography settings chosen before. I will also make all fields have the same gray color, no border and slightly rounded corners. We may also have to change the color scheme to dark to match the icon color in the date field with the typography. The checkbox and radio field settings can modify the design of two specific fields on our form. As you can see, the generic typography rules don't impact the checkbox typography. So I'll adjust the color settings and set the radio settings for the box. The next settings control the layout of repeater fields. We do have those in the form and they are displayed as many times as the user clicks the participants for the tour. Unfortunately, we cannot see how the repeater fields look in the editor 
and neither can we see them or any dynamic features in the preview mode. Because of that, I'll check how the form looks on the front end. Since I selected the pop-up with the form visibility condition to be the entire site, I can view any of the site's pages and have the template with the form appear shortly after content loads. I don't like how the repeater fields are too far apart from each other and how they are not distinguished from the other contents. However, there is no way to add a negative margin to these fields in the Bricks editor and they don't adhere to the general form row or input field settings. So to create the layout I have in mind, I'll go back to the JetForm Builder editor and modify the margins for each repeater field. In the Bricks Form editor, I'll adjust the right and left padding settings. Now the repeater fields are not too far from each other and they visually appear more connected with the previous select fields. I will also add the same side padding for the following conditional fields. Among the following styling settings, there are two relevant for this form. The submit settings, which modify the final button style and messages for the modification of the successful or failed submit messages. Note that the validation messages for the specific fields can be set up and styled only in the JetForm Manager. The rest of the settings deal with various elements of the multi-step forms, such as navigation buttons or progress bar design. For the button styling, I'm aligning the main axis to the center, switching the background color, increasing padding for the button text, and rounding the edges similarly to the way I did with other elements. Unfortunately, there are no means to add hover effects in these settings. Finally, I'll make some adjustments to the message designs to align them with the current form background, and we can check the form on the front end again. Let's try filling out the form according to validation requirements for each field. As you can see, as soon as we fill in the minimum information for calculating the tour price, the number changes in the calculation field, and if we check the car rental required field and choose a car class, the price changes again. In general, the Bricks editor has detailed settings allowing us to modify most elements in Crocoblox JetForm Builder form and provides the benefit of dynamically seeing the changes you make to the form as you go, allowing a much better UX than for example Gutenberg. I hope this video clearly demonstrates the capabilities of integrating JetForm Builder with the Bricks team. Our team appreciates your likes and comments and please subscribe to the Crocoblock YouTube channel to stay informed on Jet Plugins news, including their application within the Bricks editor. See you next time!